debugging with MIPS Navigator ICS. The MIPS Navigator Integrated Component Suite uses the industry standard Eclipse user interface to provide a C and C++ integrated development environment. It is integrated with Code Saucery's G++ compiler, which is based on the GNU C and C++ compilers. You have a choice between two versions of G++ toolchain. The bare iron version, which comes with NewLib, a small footprint C library, or a version for GNU Linux, which comes with GNU C library, or UC LibC, a smaller footprint library that is largely source compatible with GLibC. It also comes with the MIPSIM simulator, which simulates MIPS architecture, including instructions, CP0 registers, caches, and the TLB. It supports the MIPS system navigator probes that connect to the MIPS processors through the EJ tag port or MICTOR connector. The probe is a non-intrusive way to debug both standalone and multi-core configurations. In addition to debug functionality, the MIPS Navigator ICS integrates the probe's on-chip and off-chip trace features. MIPS Navigator ICS is available to run on Windows or PC Linux and is licensed using the standard FlexLM license management tool. There are several optional components that have been developed that can be added to the MIPS Navigator ICS tool. The Hotspot Analyzer plugin provides a non-intrusive profiling of software running on MIPS32 cores. It works in conjunction with the MIPS System Navigator Pro product and is built with a unique zero overhead program counter sampling feature, including in the MIPS32, 24K, 34K, and 74K cores. It graphically displays execution results for easy analysis. The Ariba Debugger plugin adds Linux debug features not found in the standard GDB debugger. These features include debugging of multiple processes, seamless debugging of parent-child processes and loadable modules, non-preemptive debugging of kernel drivers, debugging of shared libraries, and the ability to symbolically debug systems already in production. There is a version of the MIPSIM simulator that is cycle accurate for benchmarking without hardware. There is also a plugin that makes Navigator ICS aware of the internal structure of the ThreadX RTOS. This training course covers creating a C project, compiling the project, running the debug session using the MIPSIM simulator, building the project for System Navigator probe debugging, and running that code on a multiboard using the System Navigator probe. You should always start the MIPS Navigator ICS tool using the icon on your desktop or on a Windows system navigate to the tool by using the start menu and select programs MIPS Nav ICS. Doing this sets up the proper environment for the tool. The first time you run MIPS Navigator ICS you will see this welcome screen. Thereafter when you start the tool you will see the screen where you last exited. To get back to this welcome screen, you can go to the Help menu and select Welcome. Let's get started. The first thing we need to do is to go to the C, C++ perspective. You can do this by selecting the Workbench icon in the upper right hand corner of the screen. First, let me talk about what a perspective is. Each perspective is a set of windows or views as they are called in Eclipse. Each perspective is arranged for a specific purpose. We are going to be using two different perspectives for this training. One is a C, C++ perspective, which we will be using for coding and building our project. The other is the debug perspective, which we will use to control the debugging of running code. We are now going to create a project in the workspace and write some source code. To get started, from the top menu, select File, New, C Project. The C project dialog pops up. We will need to fill in the project name. I'm going to call it Hello. Next, we need to open up the executable tree and select Empty Project. 
In the toolchain window, make sure that Saucery G++ for MIPS ELF is selected. Click Next. This brings up the Select Configurations dialog. From here, select Advanced Settings. In the Properties dialog for Hello, open up the C and C++ build tree on the right and click Settings. For this demonstration, I will select the 24KC processor and I will select the SDE MDI 32LD linker script. After that, click OK and click Finish. We have just created an empty project. We now need to create the code for the project. I do this by adding a source file to the project. In the New menu, I select Source File. In the Source File dialog, I enter the name of the new file, hello.c, and click Finish. I will now enter code into the editor window. I'm just going to cut and paste to save time. One thing to note, be sure you have a new line at the end of the file, otherwise you're going to get a warning from the compiler. Save the file and click on the hammer to start the build. Notice the output in the console window. Notice it says finish building target. Hello. Before we can debug, we must create a debug configuration. We will use the debug dialog to do this. Select the arrow next to the bug in the top of the toolbar and then select Open Debug Dialog. Double clicking on the MIPS Navigator ICS Application menu item will create the Hello Debug configuration. We need to configure the debugger to use the MIPSIM simulator as a target device. Select the Debugger tab to change the debug dialog. Now, select MIPSIM in the Target Interface drop-down. Next, select Normal Boot for the reset action in the drop-down box. Select a particular MIPS core, in this case the 24K, from the group name and the device name drop-down boxes. In this case, the device name indicates the Indianness of the core. We want to select that to Big Indian since we built for Big Indian. Click on Debug to start the debug session. The screen changes to the debug perspective. There are three views of interest I'd like to cover. The first view is the debug view. The debug view gives information on the process being debugged and where it is on its stack. You can see the highlighted line in the view. It tells us what is currently active. In this case, it's telling us the debugger is in the main function, in the hello.c file on line 4, and the program counter address. The view below the debug view is the source code window. You can see the first line of the main function is highlighted. That is the next line of C code that will be executed. The lower view is the console view. This is where the program output will be displayed. Click the green arrow to continue the program. Since I haven't set any breakpoints, the program runs to completion. We can see the program output in the console window, and we can also see the debug view shows that the program has been terminated. Making code changes is easy. Just click in the source code window where you would like to make the change and type it in. As you enter the code, you'll see the editor helping you by matching the braces and brackets and such. Save the file. Click on the debug icon and the program will automatically build. Set a breakpoint 
in the left hand column of the source view next to the line that we just added by double clicking. When I click on the resume program, the program advances to the first breakpoint and we can see the first line of the program output. You can also see the debugger has highlighted the next line that will be executed. Sometimes you might want to see the underlying assembly code. To see the assembly code interlace with C or C++, click on the instruction stepping icon. This will bring up the disassembly view. Here you can see the highlighted instruction that will be executed next. Stepping in disassembly mode is much the same as stepping the source code. You use the same step icons to either step into or step over the function being called. Step into will follow the gel into the function being called, puts. Step over will set a temporary breakpoint on the first instruction to be executed on the return from the call and run to that point. In this case, that will be the move instruction since the no-op is in the jump delay slot. In this example, we can use the step over three times to step over the two instructions before the puts and the puts itself. You can see the program output in the console window. You can exit both disassembly view and instruction stepping mode by closing the disassembly view. At times you may want to reset a perspective to its default views. Just click Window and Reset Perspective. In this next section, I'll cover additional debug topics with the Navigator ICS debug tools. This section will feature debugging hardware. I will show you how to use the MIPS System Navigator probe connected to the MIPS Malta evaluation platform. We will create a new project by importing source code we already have and we will see how to track the program's variables. The MIPS Malta evaluation platform is comprised of two major hardware systems. The Malta motherboard that holds the CPU independent parts of the circuitry and one or more coprocessor boards that hold the MIPS CPU plus its system controller and additional support hardware. The Malta motherboard connects to a standard PC peripherals, making it easy for users to add more functionality, such as extra networking, hard drives, and input devices. The core processor board can contain a hardware or an FPGA emulation of a MIPS core. Basic operation of the Malta development platform is controlled by Yaman, which is supplied in the motherboard's flash memory. Yaman provides an interface for reading and changing settings in both the core board and the motherboard, loading programs into the system RAM for execution. Yaman also provides basic bootloader capabilities to allow operating systems such as Linux to be booted from a properly formatted hard drive. For this example, we are using MIPS 32K 24K core programmed into the daughter card's FPGA. We will be using the EJTAG port connected to the MIPS System Navigator probe, which is connected to the host system through the USB connection. There is a specific order to connect the MIPS System Navigator probe and power it on to ensure proper operation. Connect the MIPS System Navigator probe to the EJTAG connector between the probe and the Malta board. Connect the USB cable between the System Navigator probe and your computer. Connect the Malta board with the daughter card installed to a power supply and power it on. The LED display on the Malta board should read power on. The power light on the System Navigator probe should be lit red. The power sequence of connecting the probe to the USB port of the host system before powering on the motherboard ensures proper operation of the probe. Before creating this new project, make sure you have closed the previous project to avoid confusion. To do this, switch to the C++ perspective by clicking on the icon in the right hand corner of the screen. Then click the Hello Project and select Close Project. 
Creating this new project starts out the same as the creation of the Hello project. The C project dialog pops up. We need to fill in the project name. We're going to call it Malta. Next, we need to open up the executable tree and select Empty Project. We also need to select the toolchain Saucery G++ for MIPSELF and then click Next. This brings up the Select Configurations dialog. From here, select Advanced Settings. The properties for this Malta project is the same as for the Hello project. Open up the C, C++ build and then select Settings. Select the processor. and then select the linker script. Then click OK. Click Finish. We are going to add a directory that contains source code we already have to the project. From the main menu, select File, Import. From the Import, select General and File System and click Next. This will open up the import dialog. Here I will specify the source directory and select files in that directory to import. Click the browse button to browse to the source directory. You could just select the files you want by clicking on each one in the right hand pane, but in this case we need them all. Check the checkbox next to the FS2 folder icon in the left hand pane. This will automatically select all the files in the right hand pane. The Into folder box should automatically be filled in with Malta. If not, type Malta there now. Click Finish. To start the build of the project, click on the hammer icon. When the build is started, the build progress dialog is displayed. Depending on how long the build takes, this dialog may disappear quickly, as in the case for this example. If the build is going to take a long time, then the progress can be backgrounded by clicking on the Run in Background button. The console view displays the output and tells us when the build is finished. We now need to configure our debug session. We start by opening a debug dialog. When the debug dialog box opens, double click on the MIPS Navigator ICS application. This should automatically fill in the name of the project and point to the correct application. Now click on the debugger tab. The debugger dialog should default mostly correctly for this example. You can see the target interface is set to the FS2 probe. The correct GDB version is selected. The reset action should be changed to normal boot. The program will stop at main. The NES will be auto selected and we're going to be using MIPS single core. Make sure your multi board is booted to the Yaman prompt as indicated by the LED lights on the board and your probe is connected to the USB port on your host system. Make sure the Indianness of the board agrees with your project. It is Big Indian for this example. Click Debug. The tool starts communicating with the probe and you will see a config probe configuration dialog pop up. Select MIP single core and click OK. Now you'll see the System Navigator console. You could actually use this console to enter in commands. In this case, we're not going to be using the console, so we can just close the console. The tool will start communicating with the probe, and soon you will see the probe configuration dialog pop up. Make sure MIP single core is selected and click OK. Next you'll see the System Navigator console 
We're not going to be using the console for this demonstration, so we'll just put it away for now. Here's an operation note. You might encounter the following situation. You build your project and click on the debug icon and the perspective does not change. Changing to the debug perspective, you see the program is running but did not stop at the breakpoint at the start of main. The problem could be the wrong Indianness. Change the project to compile with the correct Indianness or the target Indianness on the multiboard switch set S5, switch number 2, is not set correctly. If neither of these things helps you, reboot your board and try again. We are now in the debug perspective, stopped at the beginning of the main function. Let's run through some additional features of the debugger. Set a breakpoint at line 61. Run to that breakpoint. The variables view shows you the current function's local variables. You can select global variables to display in the variables view. Click on the eyeglass icon, which brings up a list of local variables. I'll select the variables I'm interested in. And select OK. Sometimes you might be interested in displaying variables in a different format. Hex, for example. You can right click on any one of the variables or select all the variables by selecting the top one and holding down the shift key. To change the format, right click on the highlighted variables and select radix and then select the format you wish. Now you can see that all the variables have changed to hex format. You can step into a function and see the local variables change. The debugger will show you where you are in the program stack by highlighting the current function and giving you the information on what file it's in and the address of that function. You can switch context to any function currently on the stack by clicking on the function in the debug view. You can see that the perspective view will change to that function you have selected. Of course, you can only continue from where you left off. If you try to step in a context that is not active, the debugger will step and switch the view back to the current function. This ends this class segment. Thanks for watching.